Hello, so good to have you here with us on the Excuse Buster Show where we bust through the things that get in your way of feeling how you want to feel and living the life you want to live. I'm Lizzie Williamson and if poor body image, self-esteem, lack of confidence is holding you back or you're concerned about it might be holding back your tweens or teenagers, then you want to stay tuned because this stunning woman beside me is a trailblazer in her work when it comes to empowering, educating and supporting our teenagers. She's the founder of Beautiful Minds, which is a leading provider of self-image, self-worth, and confidence education. Uh, this woman travels around the country impacting thousands if not millions of teenagers and adults and helps bridge the gap between both of those people. She runs courses, programs in schools, is such an amazing support network for teens and adults and she is a self-described relentless person, a <laughs> tough businesswoman, but I know for a fact that she has got the warmest of hearts. She's not afraid to tackle the tough issues and get into the nuts and bolts when it comes to what is facing our teenagers. Marina Pasolaris, thank Hi, you Andrew. for having Hi, me and the Beautiful Hi. Minds officers. Thank you, thank you for being here. Oh, it's, it's great such, to see you. Yes, it's great <laughs> to see you too. And as a mum of almost two teenage girls, I am incredibly grateful for what you do here at Thank Beautiful you. Minds. It is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we think it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> we talk a lot about training our bodies, don't we? I mean, especially in my industry, in the fitness industry. And so often what I see happening is our self-worth so tied up in what our bodies look like. But you called your business you didn't call it beautiful bodies, you called it beautiful minds, and you talk about the training of the mind. Mm. How do we even begin to do this? The hard thing to navigate as an adult, let alone as a teenager, especially when some of these beliefs and mindsets we have feel very deep-rooted inside of us. Yeah, absolutely. And first thing I'm going to say that I actually came up with the name before the movie A Beautiful Mind. Do you oh, guys remember? that's you guys right. Remember the movie A Beautiful Mind? <laughs> Um, I'd actually just started the, the company then and it was really weird. I wanted it to be something that we're so focused about what we look like mm -hmm. and having come off the back of working in, in modeling agencies for so many years, I just felt that we were constantly focused on what, at that, you know, what, what women look like. And although now at Beautiful Minds we do boys as well, mm -hmm. um, when I started it 14 years ago, it was about what, you know, what was your weight doing? and what lipstick were you wearing and all that sort of stuff which was just so you know focused on the exterior so I wanted to make sure that the name of the company was all about being beautiful inside because mm. haven't we met those people that are so stunning but yet you know inside that they just don't have the nicest personalities and they can very quickly become unattractive and the reverse is that you can meet someone who you know, you personally may not think is the most amazing looking person, but if they have got the morals and they've got this incredible kind of energy about them, they can become the most magnificent looking people on, on the face of the earth. Totally. So, you know, it is about just re-educating people about not only what goes on here, but what goes on internally for us. And a lot like you, you talk about with your industry about staying fit and healthy, our mind is the most powerful muscle that we have. Mm. We've got to get it strong. And it's not about um, doing a day and then having four days off and then, you know, we were athletes. We wouldn't be able to win gold medals and get to the Olympics by just doing a day here and a day there. And that's a lot about what we talk to our young people about as well, is that if you want to be strong here, where you can be in control of everything that you do, you have to do it every single day. Yeah. Do the work. Do the work. Mm. Yeah. I've mentioned before your incredibly warm, beautiful heart. And I know that with your beautiful minds, teens, you will pick up the phone if they give you a call, yeah. maybe on the program. Yeah. So what do you see or hear or observe is something that teenagers need the most that perhaps they're not getting? I think how teens feel that they're not being heard. Right. 
And we are in such a busy society now with social media and very busy parents and so much going on that they actually just don't feel that people can sit like this mm. and look and hug and talk and listen to what they're going through. And that's something that we, I mean, aside from the wonderful content and the, and the work that we give them to do and the, the strategies and the tools, um, it's something that I'm, I'm big on. So we have these great kind of aftercare programs for our young people as well. And yes, if they want to phone me at 10 o'clock at night and have a conversation, my door's always open, my phone's always on, they can do that. Um, because I think we've lost a lot of that uh, human you know, connection. Yeah, I kind of felt the tears well up actually when you started to talk about how busy we are and the fact that I'm sure you watching or listening, I know myself, we feel like we are listening to our, our teens, our kids, but, but are we really? Mm. I think, you know, one of the things that we encourage parents to do from a, a point of view of reconnecting with the young people is to actually set up a date with them. And it can be once a month. It is only you and that, that child. Um, there's no mobile phones, there's no distractions where you can actually go somewhere, let your child pick where they want to go, and, and go somewhere and do something where it's just the two of you. And for one hour out of 24 hours in the day, you guys can manage that. Um, and it's about reconnecting and having a conversation. How are you feeling? What is going on in your life? How can I support you? Simple. I love that. Mm. So simple to do and in a way so easy to do and yet so easy not to do, isn't it? Look, I think we're just, you know what, we're creatures of habit. Mm. We get on this kind of roller coaster of life and we just go and we, we don't kind of stop to think about what's working in our world and what's not working in our world. Um, and I think if you are feeling disconnected as an adult, and you, even if you don't have kids, um, stop and work out where do you, re where you, where do you need to reconnect? Um, and I think as, as human beings, we're so focused on online that we have forgotten the, the human connection. And even I find when we talk to people nowadays, we don't listen. We're so busy wondering about how we're going to respond to them mm -hmm. that we've just forgotten to just reconnect. Mm -hmm. mm. Are you finding, I know for me and my circle of friends, the women I speak to, our kids, there feels like there's a lot of anxiety. <laughs> Do you see this? I know you have had experience with anxiety. Yeah, I have. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you see that in our teens? It's huge, mm. and you know it's so interesting because when I when I started the company fourteen years ago, we weren't talking about anxiety. I mean, I had it very severely um, for for many years as a young person, um, and I was actually diagnosed with something called agoraphobia. And I think for me, it came through. A number of things. One of the main reasons I think was living in South Africa in a, in a place that was very unsafe, um, where we were constantly around guns and and feeling like our, our life was threatened. So I think you put anyone into that environment where they feel like there's that sort of fight or flight, um, you know, activity happening every second of of the day, they're going to have anxiety. But even back then, you know, we didn't talk about it. Uh, there was a huge stigma around it. And now it is just something that in a, in a course of sort of say 30 girls or, or 30 boys, I'd say probably about 95% probably about of those young people are either medicated or really struggling with anxiety. So the numbers are through the roof. Mm. Mm. So how do you begin to help someone with anxiety? We've got a number of different things in, in place. So firstly, we work with um, some of Australia's top parenting experts, mm -hmm. and we've got this amazing, amazing team of psychologists and experts on board that we put our young people in contact with so that they've got that support. Mm -hmm. um, we give them some really solid tools and strategies that they can do so that they know what to do. And I think one of the most important things is when you have something like anxiety, you need to have almost an anxiety care pack that you take with you everywhere. And it can be some really simple things like some cards with some affirmations that you have written when you're in a very clear, calm state of mind. Mm -hmm. um, it could be an oil, it could be you know some lavender oil because as soon as you actually smell an oil when you're feeling very overwhelmed, 
it just stops the adrenals from, from going crazy. Um, I think it can be explaining to your friends and your family about what your triggers may be so that they're aware of what you're going through mm -hmm. and um, just setting some things in, in place. And I think what I find is that people that have anxiety in general tend to be perfectionists and I will put my hand up for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, well done. Um, and we <laughs> us, um, tend to want to make sure that the outcome is a certain way before we've even gotten there. And so we do a lot of work around um, breaking down that whole perfectionist thinking so that people can actually understand that, you know, you, you can't control, you know, there's so much in life we can't control. We can't control the weather. We can't control politics. Um, we can't control what other people think of us. Mm -hmm. And you are the only thing that you can control and you are, you are driving this car for the next however many years you're going to be here so get in the seat and and, and drive it correctly yeah. and, and have power and control over it and you know we we give simple strategies with how to do that mm -hmm. yeah when you talk about the work that you do on your mind is there something that you've seen a, a, a something in that toolkit that has been very powerful in mm -hmm. terms of working mm -hmm. for people, like a little practice that they these teenagers take away and do every day. I think it's quite difficult for us to, I, I'm actually not about the very fluffy affirmations that mm -hmm. happen because I think, you know, we're, we're just not wired to go from a point of, um, have we just lost Facebook Live? Ah, thank you. We just got cut off there. <laughs> Facebook, thank you very much. And I was asking Marina about the, that work that the teenagers do, the things that actually you can see have quite a profound impact, those little things, and you're talking about, it, it's, you're not into the fluffy. So. I'm not, I, I just guess there's so many people out there that tell young people to just love yourself and just mm. to be happy and be confident, and, and that's great, um, and that's all very positive, and we're all about positive, but it actually doesn't give them any strategies on how to be confident, mm. uh, how to be happy, and I think, you know, we've got a mind that's not very wired to go from a place of hating ourselves straight to a point of loving ourselves, which is not wired like that. Mm. So we need to um, allow people to go on a journey until they get to a point where they are they're actually accept who they are. And then when you accept who you are, you're more likely to eventually love who you are. You can't jump from hate to love. It just doesn't work. So in terms of a lot of the strategies that we give young people about strengthening their their mind, um, I think one of the things that's really powerful is getting them off social media, number one. What's your statistic about how many hours we're on, oh, we're no, on social I media? You, no. So we spend in our life span we spend if you're spending a couple of hours a day on social media we spend 15 years of our life on social media and i know it blows we spoke, your mind doesn't it yeah it's crazy mm. like can you imagine the places you could visit in those 15 years and the languages that you could learn and the experiences that you could have and the conversations you could have one-on-one -on -one with people. And I just think it's such a huge waste of time because what I want to ask you guys, and I know ironically you're watching it on social, um, but what I do want to ask you is if you do spend a lot of time on social media, what have you actually learned from it? So what value, you know, unless you're following people that are very inspiring, that are giving you great content, I'm, I guarantee you that 98% of you will tell me that you actually feel worse off when you've gotten off social media. So one of the things that we encourage young people is to, for them to stop following anyone that makes them feel bad about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if that's your best friend. If your best friend makes you feel horrible based on a post that she's putting up there, you actually have a right to take yourself away from her platform. Um, and that's just people that make you feel devalued mm -hmm. or that you're not achieving enough or, you know, and even as women, we know that we've had other females or males that we followed on social media that for some reason they trigger us not to feel great. Yes, it might not even be the person. They might be fabulous. Yes, it. it's, it's the gonna, trigger. Yeah, mm. there's a trigger there and you've got to understand as a human being that you need to remove yourselves from that. So 
Social media is a big one. Um, I'm also very much about routine. So have a routine in your world where it's exercising, it's eating really, really healthy food, um, it's getting up at, at a you know the right hour every morning and, and sleeping at, at roughly the same time every night as well. And something that I've done for probably the last 20 years is um, I listen to a meditation before I go to bed every night because I call that brain food. So it's really important for me to finish the day where I'm putting something great into this amazing muscle up here called the mind. And then I start the morning with something super inspirational and, um, and very powerful because when we turn on the news and we hear about all the doom and gloom and we are directed by the media to feel terrible, that's not a good start to your day. Where do you so, find your meditations, your inspiring things for at night time? Yeah, look, I love, there's a great guy on, um, on YouTube called Michael Seely. Okay. And he's brilliant for, for lots of meditation, just because he works with a lot of psychologists and um, mental health experts. So, how do you spell his last name? I think it's S E E L E Y, -L -E mm -hmm. or it might be S E A. Mm, we'll um, find it. We'll find we'll it. it and, yeah. Mm. Um, but he's really great because you can go in there and just decide what do you feel like that day. You know, do I need a meditation for anxiety? Do I need need a meditation for a bit of self care? And he's so soothing to listen to. You'll be asleep. Even an insomniac like me goes to sleep quite quickly with a bit of Michael Seeley. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do your teens say when you recommend they get off social media? Look, they struggle. Reaction. Yeah, yeah, they struggle. Mm. Um, we actually have started running these amazing retreats around Australia. So we do a three-day retreat in Sydney. Um, we've got them in Melbourne and we're just about to launch in Queensland. And we take kids off, off their social devices for three days and we give them organic food, um, yoga classes, meditation, sessions with us at Beautiful Minds, kayaking, big bonfires, marshmallows, like literally wow. everything that we can throw in, waterfall walks. Um, and that's really amazing for them to realize how they feel after three days. Okay. And I do a challenge with our young people that they go off social media for one day, so full 24 hours, mm -hmm. and then report back to us with how they're feeling. And I've never had anyone say to me, I felt worse. Everyone says that they felt really calm and that they actually enjoyed it as a bit of a change. And I think we'll start to see a bit of a shift with people wanting to find more balance with that. Because mm. we've just gone so extreme with it and we've got to kind of pull back a bit. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that has an impact on the way that we view our bodies and especially with 100%. teens and our body image? 100%. Mm. You know, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm 100 years old, but when I was a child, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we just didn't, we didn't have the social media images in front of us all the time. And even as I'm an incredibly emotionally sound human being and I go on and I have days where I'm just like, whoa, like, mm. it's just all too much. And what we understand from the research is that young people, their brains are not developed yet. So. We did a study with the, uh, with the uh, Sydney University where I couldn't understand why I was telling our young people to block someone on social media when they were being bullied and why they weren't actioning that. And the study that we did, we found that because a young person's brain is not fully developed, they are unable to actually disconnect from something even if it is horrifically mm. negative. Mm. So as an adult, we don't understand. We would just block someone and be done with it and get on with our day. Whereas a young person, they're, just, they're not wired like that. They haven't developed. So they will rather stay in a feed where they are being tormented by other people for fear of missing out, FOMO, mm -hmm. and because they, they just can't disconnect. So we're giving a, um, a device to young kids that's been created for adults, primarily, and we're asking them to use it, but use it as adults would use it. Mm. And they can't, they mm. can't do it. So it's like giving a car to a 14 year old and say, just drive carefully. Yeah. That's what we've done. Mm. That's what we've done. And you know, it's not going anywhere. And this is not a big whinge about, you know, how terrible social media is because I love it. But I think we really need to be 
a lot more aware about the impacts that it is having um, and as as adults and as parents monitoring how that filters into your life because so many parents say I can't get him or her off their devices actually you can you're the parent mm -hmm. you know set up those boundaries make sure that you are doing practicing what you're preaching and you're also off your device so that you've got that whole family following the same thing um, and just do it mm. it's not that hard yeah you know mm. Mm. many of us have these body demons and struggle with body image and that idea of loving yourself can feel incredibly foreign and hard and yet that's what we want for our children so yeah. desperately to not have those body image issues what do you think is a is a good strategy for a tool or something that parents can do to help instill that body confidence mm. in our teens i think um you know it's a, it's a struggle for a lot of people so it's something that we will for the rest of our lives be working on how we feel about ourselves and sometimes we go through patches where we feel fantastic and other times we go through patches where we don't feel that great but when you have a young person in your care I think it's really important not to be using words like dieting and um, you know calorie counting and all those sorts of negative things around them where they feel that that is the norm so I grew up in a Greek household with a lot of food yeah. <laughs> and this real feeling that when we came together and we ate there was such beautiful quality food but that was our time as a family where we where we spoke to each other mm -hmm. and so I guess I always grew up feeling that that's just how everyone that was just a relationship with food and and body and, and everything that everyone had in their families and I think if we can make meal times with our families a lot more positive I think that's going to be a huge a huge one um, women in general are quite uh, tough on, on themselves so I think just being mindful about how you talk to your young people about your own body mm. um, and I think the other thing that really helps as well is that our young people want to see their parents being really supportive and uh, positive about other people because that shows that you've got a really strong mindset and that you you know you're kind and you you're all sorts of wonderful things but I think when we hear our parents speaking negatively about other people that starts to show a real lack of confidence uh, in someone in, in it just in a general sense so I think if we can start you know lifting each other up and speaking about if you're going to talk about someone make sure it's something good if you don't have anything nice to say it's very simple but just don't say it because as far as I'm concerned, everyone in this world has a great quality. So we need to kind of just highlight that. Um, and if we can hear our parents speaking like that, that's going to be great. So we take away that self-esteem being so wrapped up in our bodies. And what do we wrap it up in instead? What are you good at? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what lights you up? Like, are you an amazing photographer? Do you love horse riding or soccer? Are you artistic? I think one of the biggest lessons that we can take away from some incredible, incredible people that are role models in the community, if we look at someone, for example, like Terea Pitt, an example, she was beautiful, young model, going about her day, and then she obviously had the horrific accident where she landed up getting burnt to 65% of her body. Now, if you're someone like that who then has to confront the fact that you no longer look like you used to look, you start to realize as a human being, and she's particularly incredible, but you do start to realize that we are more than just this, and we need to talk about more than just this. We have a mind, we have a wicked sense of humor, we're kind, we've got a voice that's very powerful that we can use, and how do we give back to our community? Because as human beings, I don't care what age you are, um, or what, what financial status you have, if you are unable to, to uh, contribute to anyone around you in any way, then what are we doing? You know, it, and as simple as walking down the street and seeing a piece of rubbish on the floor, pick it up, put it in the bin. Little things that we can do to feel that we're valued as a community, I think that's really important. So if we can stop talking to our kids about what they look like, 
and more about who they are, what they, what they think, what they can say, that's when you're going to see some really powerful things happening. Isn't she the most incredible woman? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. you are such a tireless, relentless campaigner for our teens. What keeps you going? What keeps you getting up at 5 a.m. and taking calls at 10 p.m.? There's nothing else I've ever wanted to do. Like this, this is it. And I genuinely know that this is my life. This is why I'm here. Um, I love it. it. Every single day it inspires me and I just feel so filled up. That's the thing. I literally feel every day I go, how the hell did I get to live this life? Like I'm so, I'm so fulfilled with the work that we do um, but so inspired by the work that still needs to be done. And what's firing you up the most right now? You got something coming up? Yeah, we've yeah. got so much coming up. Um, so I've just come. Sorry, I should say something. <laughs> some things. <laughs> we um, we've just done an incredible partnership with the uh, 20th Century Fox. So we are bringing out the stars of a new movie that's coming out called The Darkest Mind, and the Hollywood actresses are coming out to Sydney, um, and we're going to be hosting them for a week, which will be amazing. Wow! And it's all about young people being given superpowers mm. to do good in their community. So it works in really well with the work that we do. So we've got that on the go, which is happening in August. We have B Day, which is our annual event, mother-daughter event this year. So it's a whole new offering um, and we've got people like Elle Ferguson um, and Sophie Delizio and some incredible, incredible, you know, powerhouse females on stage um, talking to young girls and their mums, all role models if you don't want to bring your mum, um, but young girls about life in general, which is really exciting. And we are in the process of launching a new website, launching three new amazing online courses and uh, organizing a world tour for, be for Beautiful Minds next year. So we're doing UK, USA, um, and then Australia with a team from the States that are coming out. So awesome. High five well, to that's, that. What's going on? <laughs> what's going on? So tell me, what's your superpower? When you talk about everyone finding their superpowers, what's yours? Empathy. Oh, wow. I was talking to my daughters about that on the way to school yeah, this morning. Empathy is everything, mm. isn't, isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you can have empathy, you're, you're quite you're able to cope with situations in such a different, more effective way. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. And I think also, you know, we get so caught up with life and being serious about it and just have fun. Like I know that there's bills and that there is stress along the way, but at the end of the day, we are here for such a short amount of time and we need to just kind of connect with the people we want to connect with, do the things we want to do, and just that will make it so much more exciting. So I think we need to just be a little bit less stressed about what it all needs to look like. Yeah, fun. Yeah, That's your key it's fun. As well, and I'm sure that our teens, pre-teens, kids get a lot out of that when we actually have that fun together. Absolutely. Mm. You know, we're so serious about mm. everything and we need to enjoy it more and just be a bit more childlike in it as well. And um, I mean, I turned 40 last year and I still feel like I'm 22. Mm. You know, there's just, we, we get so caught up with the number and where we should be at a particular time um, and how we should look or dress or feel and um, and we just, we need to just leave that. Yeah, mm. we sure do. Mm. So many words of wisdom. Thank you so much. You'll find the link there for Beautiful Minds. It's beautifulminds.com. Beautifulminds.com.au. Yeah, the link is, is up there. And yeah, you can connect with you there, I'm sure, and find out all about these amazing things that you have got coming up there. If you would like this episode sent to your inbox, then head to the link that's there, twominutemoves.com forward slash live TV. And what resonated for you with this conversation? I have got like a million things that has resonated for me. We'd love to hear from you in the comments and we'll keep the conversation going there. Like and share this episode so that it gets around on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching it so that other people can really benefit from these wonderful, insightful things 
that Marina from Beautiful Minds has had to say today and the work that she's doing. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank Thanks you so everyone. much for watching. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I was like, <laughs> 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 so much to share with you guys. I'll go finish it. Oh, no, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> I'll finish that. Uh, finish. <laughs>